Hello everyone, Heinlein here and welcome back to my channel. So in this tutorial we will go through how to use radar guided air to air missiles in the Mirage F1. If you have not watched my previous video on uh, the Serrano uh, 4 radar, I recommend you do that first. There's a lot of useful key bindings that we're going to use in uh, this video that I covered there. So when it comes to radar guided missiles, the Mirage F1 can carry two types. It is uh, the R530F in which you can get two types, it is the radar guided version and the IR guided version. Today I am uh, carrying uh, the R530F, the radar guided version, the so called EM version. You can also carry the S530F, which uh, is uh, the so called Super Matra, and it has vastly better range and performance than uh, the standard, standard R530F. But today I we are carrying the R530F, the older version which uh, is uh, something between uh, an AIM-9 and then the Sparrow missile. It has an effective range of uh, about uh, 7 miles, more or less. It is uh, quite slow and uh, sluggish, and uh, it is in reality quite easy to avoid. But that's what we have today, and I will demonstrate how to use it. So, as you can see on my radar, we have a small contact in almost uh, pretty much on our nose, uh, about 30 miles out. So we're going to change our um, uh, displayed uh, range on the uh, on the scope here to, up to 35, and there he is. But as you can see, we do not get a radar contact for each radar sweep, and that is because the radar is uh, sweeping in a pattern like this: from top, a bit down, and back, and back up again, and to the right, and then down, and then back again, and then up, and it continues in that pattern. I want to get a little bit uh, more clear and distinct radar feedbacks, so I'm going to flip this switch down to 1. And now we can see that we get a more uh, consistent uh, radar returns. That is because this target I know is at roughly 10,000 feet, so uh, the radar beam is uh, uh, getting a good track on the guy. And I also want uh, to change uh, the scale, uh, scale a little bit here, so let's flip it down to 30, like so. Now we're going to set up our weapons, we're going to uh, uh, activate uh, the left Matra missile and the uh, right one. But there is one more thing we need to do, we need to arm the weapons, like so, ping. And now we can see uh, two triangles here. Those indicate the weapon stations on each wing right here. Now we are going to lock onto the guy, so we are going to get our cursor up, like so. He might not be able to get a lock on the guy. No, we don't. So we are going to unpause and get a little bit closer. Another really neat feature about this jet is that uh, once we have locked on the target we actually get um, a little dot up on the HUD here that indicates the location of uh, our target. It's a very neat feature that uh, I don't think any other aircraft uh, of this period have in DCS. You have to get to Gen 4 aircraft essentially to uh, get that kind of uh, features. Now let's try to lock him up again. Lock. Nope, still not locking him. Need to get closer. As you as you saw, we lost him a little bit on the radar. He might have been in uh, in a notch. So let's try to lock him up one more time now. Still not getting a lock. I'm going to switch to IC mode. Oops. I'm going to switch to IC mode. Like so. Might get a lock then. There, we got a lock. And now we can see a little bit more symbols uh, on our... Uh, a display here. The one to the right indicates our closer rates. Right now we are closing in on the target quite nicely. And he is at, uh, let's see, roughly 15 miles. And now we can see that little dot. There he is. 
And you can see now two circles, that means we have launch authority. So if you press the launch button right now, we are going to launch a missile. And I'm going to illustrate uh, just uh, how terrible the, these missiles are. So let's uh, launch Fox 1. Let's press the weapons release button. As you can see, it is really slow. And it has already burned out. And another thing you see, this line right here indicates uh, our uh, where we need to steer to get an optimal firing solution. There. Now we are quite close, so let's launch again. Fox 1. This one should hit, or else I'll be really, really disappointed. Hmm. Seems like he made it, I don't see any shoots. Oh, there we go. So guys, that is how you do a standard lock-on and fire in the Mirage. Now I'm going to show you how to uh, uh, do it in Boresight or TEL mode. So I'm going to reset the mission. And we're going to try this one more time. Alright guys, now I have reset the, the mission. And as you can see, it's right in front of us here. I'm going to set this one to one line once again and set up our weapons. Just like we did, like so. Now what we're going to do, we're going to pretend uh, that uh, we just uh, merged with the guy in a dogfight and we want to fire our radar guided missiles. There he is. Let's flip the TL button. Oh, we locked on right away. Just going to do one more pass to demonstrate it uh, a little bit uh, clearer. Let's press the center switch. Goes back to search. I have a lot more success using the TL and not the bore sight. I don't know why ac exactly. And as I said in my previous video, this uh, mode works between uh, 300 and 7000 meters. There, it locked on. Now we can fire. Fox 1. Splash. Let's flip uh, our sidewinder or uh, dogfight uh, switch and switch to our guns and let's finish him off. It actually looks like he survived this. That's the sidewinder toe. That was terrible aiming on my part. Ooh. Oh, that was close. So guys, that is how you use radar guided missiles in the Mirage F1. I hope uh, you learned something and you found this uh, video useful. Please leave a like and uh, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.